good morning, everyone. I think in the interest of time, we're going to get started uh, now. So good morning. My name is Roy Nascimento. I have the honor and privilege of serving as the President and CEO of the North Central Massachusetts Chamber of Commerce. And in my role as President of the Chamber, I also have the honor of serving as the President of a wonderful organization called the Johnny Appleseed Trail Association, which is our, our uh, tourism arm uh, that runs the visitor center here and does business as uh, Visit North Central Massachusetts. So on behalf of those organizations, I really want to welcome you here today. It's great to, to see you here. And uh, I have the honor of serving as the master of ceremonies for today's, uh, today's brief program. So before we continue, I want to acknowledge a few uh, local elected officials that have joined us here today. Uh, if you could just give a quick wave, I want to start off with State Representative Natalie Higgins of uh, Lemonster. Thank you, Representative. How about a round of applause? For <laughs> State Representative Meg Kilcoyne is here. Thank you for joining us. We have uh, Lem Lemonster City Council President Mark Bedanza is here, and you'll hear from Mark a little later. We also have from the City Council uh, Brandon Robbins. Council Brandon Robbins, thank you. Councilor Claire Frieda is here. Thank you, Councilor. And uh, we have um, the Highway Administrator, uh, Jonathan Gulliver, is here. You'll hear from him in a little bit in the administration. And I believe from uh, the Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, an important partner, uh, we have the Deputy, uh, the Chief of Staff and Deputy Director, uh, Charlie Tukowski, here. I hope I said that name right. Uh, he might not be here yet, but I want to acknowledge him and thank him for all of their support. So. Thank you all for gathering here today uh, to celebrate a truly remarkable milestone, the 250th birthday of John Chapman, known to all of us as Johnny Appleseed. On September 26, 1774, right here in Lemonster, a legend was born. Johnny Appleseed would go on to become not just our Commonwealth's official folk hero, but a symbol of environmental stewardship and a pioneering spirit that resonates across our nation. For nearly 50 years, Johnny Appleseed traveled across our young country, planting apple seeds and nurturing orchards. But he didn't just plant trees, he planted hope, community, and a vision for the future. As we stand here today at the Johnny Appleseed Visitor Center, the gateway to North Central Massachusetts, we're reminded of the deep roots our region has in this American tale. This center, with its bronze sculpture of a young Johnny Appleseed at the front there, the 91 apple trees that are planted on the grounds here of, of the Visitor Center, including three Rambo trees that are direct descendants of, of the trees that Johnny planted. We have a collection of Johnny Appleseed memorabilia inside the Visitor Center. And then of course the big apple of New England right here, which you, it's hard to miss. Uh, and a replica, our newest addition here to the, to the grounds is the replica of a colonial era, era home that was uh, donated recently by DOL Construction a local construction firm along with the city of Lemonster that uh, helps support that. All of this helps keep Johnny's story alive for future generations. But Johnny was more than just a character in folklore. While we all have the image of Johnny Appleseed wearing a, a stove pot hat with a bag on his back, spreading apple seeds across the countryside, he also was a successful businessman who helped many new communities flourish. Indeed, his legacy is one of balance between nature and progress, between simplicity and entrepreneurship. Later today, we're going to be planting this new apple tree that's right here. Uh, and this was graciously donated by our friends at Sholin Farms. I know uh, Joanne DiNardo, who is president of, of uh, Sholin Farms, thank you very much, is here uh, today. Thank you. To mark this occasion and, uh, and to continue to sow the seeds of, of his vision. And as you leave here today, I encourage each of you to explore more about Johnny Appleseed's life and legacy, visit the center, explore our beautiful communities here in North Central Massachusetts, and perhaps even plant a tree of your own. In doing so, we ensure that the spirit of Johnny Appleseed, the spirit of growth, generosity, and vision continues to thrive for another 250 years and beyond. So with that, thank you very much, Johnny Appleseed. Happy birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Hill, who is an impersonator of uh, Johnny Appleseed. Thank you, Larry, for all the work that you do and for everything. I see Senator Eldridge has joined us, so I want to acknowledge that. Thank you, Senator, for joining us today. So now I'd like to turn it over to our next speaker. 
who is uh, like to welcome up. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome up State Representative Natalie Higgins, who represents the City of Lancaster. Representative Higgins. Thank you, Roy. Uh, just really glad to be with you all today and to honor Johnny Appleseed's legacy and and the legacy that it's. Lemonster continues to celebrate. Um, on behalf of the Massachusetts House of Representatives with Representative Ben Kilcoin, you want to <laughs> um, we brought a congratula congratulatory citation celebrating the 250th anniversary of Johnny Appleseed's birth um, and the, the legacy of the American pioneer John Chapman and the tenacity of our great city. Thank you and I will present this to City Council President Mark Bonanza. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Representative Higgins, and uh, I also want to uh, invite uh, Representative Kilcoyne up if she would like to say a few remarks. So uh, the Visitor Center here, it's interesting enough, it, it uh, sits in both Lancaster and Lemonster. Representative Kilcoyne represents Lancaster, which also has a strong legacy around apples and has a connection to Johnny Appleseed, and of course Lemonster, which was the birthplace of, of Johnny Appleseed. So welcome, Representative Kilcoyne. Well, oh, geez. Thank you so much, Roy. I thought this uh, wire went a little farther. Oh, thank you, everybody. I am so happy to be here with everyone today to celebrate this momentous occasion. Um, I think that remembering our history and our legacy is so critical. And to be here at the uh, Johnny Appleseed Visitor Information Center on his birthday, I think, is a great reminder both for us and people that come from all over the Commonwealth to visit North Central Massachusetts of uh, the history that we have here and the literally the seeds that Johnny Appleseed planted are still enjoyed by so many of us today. So, so glad to be here with everybody. So glad to celebrate with you all and, and thank you so much, Roy. So uh, next I'd like to invite up uh, a special partner. Um, so Jonathan Gulliver, who is the administrator for Mass Highway and uh, this visitor center, this remarkable visitor center that we have here that's unique, that really helps tell the story of our region and Johnny Appleseed is really a partnership. The Johnny Appleseed um, Trail Association operates this visitor center, uh, but our, our landlord is actually Mass Highway and uh, they're great landlords. Uh, they uh, invest in the upkeep of the grounds here and are really a strong partner and uh, the administrator is going to talk about that partnership and some investments that they're making in, in the visitor center. So please join me in welcoming Jonathan Gulliver. All right, thank you, Roy, and uh, thank you everybody for having me here today. Uh, again, my name is Jonathan Gulliver. I'm the State Highway Administrator and I'm also a resident of Lancaster, so I'm uh, really happy to be here and, you know, share in the, the rich uh, legacy and history of our region. It's always nice to see uh, the spotlight put on here, and honestly, it's always nice to be able to just get up and be five minutes away from where, we're, where I'm working today. So, um, you know, it, as Roy said, we have a fantastic partnership uh, with the Chamber and, it, it, and with this facility in particular, and this is something that we struggle with across the state is to, is to maintain our rest areas in, in a good condition, and in order to do that, we need strong partners, and it's something that is rare to find and I can honestly say that, that, that this, is, uh, this, is, this is not just a rest area, it is a visitor center and it's the best maintained one in Massachusetts, having gone all over the state. Now, it, it really is. And uh, I'm not just saying that because I am a resident, I'm saying that it's because it's true. And it, it, it's something that is, is again, thanks to the, the dedication of the staff here and the strong partnership of, of the chamber. And you know, it's something that we are continuing to really work at, at work and partner with them on and making sure that they have the resources they need to keep this in good condition, that we're, uh, that we're providing and upgrading as we can. And one of the things that we're excited about is, as part of our modernization effort across Massachusetts, we're going to be bringing four EV chargers here uh, to, to, the, to the visitor center. Our hope is, is that they're going to be so heavily used that we're going to be able to add more into the, into the future. But it's, uh, it's going to become a really important hub for our charging network across the state. As, as part of the national charging network as well. So again, I really want to thank uh, everybody for being here today, especially our, our elected officials, uh, Senator Eldridge and uh, Rep. Kilcoin and Higgins. You know, it, it's again, it's really important to have their partnership as well to make sure that places like this uh, continue to be successful. And of course, I, I also want to thank the city of Lemonster, uh, the mayor who is not here, or being a board member, I have to always, 
course, thank him. He's been a, uh, also a, a great advocate for transportation and continues to be. And then uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, President, uh, Mark Bedanza, again, really happy to have you here as well supporting us. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, and again, thank you for the uh, strong partnership we have with uh, Mass Highway. So next on our agenda, I'd like to uh, call up uh, the City Council President from Lemonster, again, a very important community and supporter of, of the work of the uh, Visitor Center and the Johnny Appleseed Trail Association uh, is the City of Lemonster, and uh, Mark is, uh, I was joking around with Mark earlier, he's uh, a really an incredible guy. For those of you that um, are not familiar with Mark and his, uh, his bio, he's uh, not only the city council president, he's a, he's a successful attorney locally, uh, and that, that would certainly be enough for a lot of people, but he's also very active in the community in a variety of ways. He uh, serves on the, uh, the Historical Society. He was the co-chair of the city's 250th uh, planning committee for uh, Johnny Appleseed's birthday. Um, not, not only that, but he's also an historian, a very active historian, has written a number of books uh, including uh, one about Johnny Appleseed and his uh, his life and, and times. Uh, so I don't know where he finds the time. I feel like I should be doing more, you know, based on uh, everything that he's accomplished. Uh, but with that in mind, please welcome um, Mark Bedanza to come up for a few remarks. Thank you, Roy. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you to the Chamber, to the Trail Association. Thank you to uh, Representative Higgins, Kilcoyne, Senator Eldridge, um, our fellow city councilors, uh, Claire Frieder and Brandon Robbins. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, I wrote a book on Johnny Appleseed um, last year, and uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh, back oh, about 10 years ago, I was going to write a Johnny Appleseed biography, but I had an opportunity to write um, the biography of a Celtics legend named Sam Jones. And my brother said, why would you pass up that opportunity? Johnny can wait. <laughs> so Johnny waited almost a decade, and I finally got around to writing his biography last year. And when I set out to do it, I thought, as a local historian, I knew a little bit about Johnny Appleseed, and I soon found out that I didn't know very much at all. Um, itinerant Appleseed sower, ambassador uh, on the uh, frontier, religious uh, missionary, entrepreneur Johnny Appleseed wore a lot of hats and um, today I think Johnny Appleseed speaks to us in many ways no um, figure of American folklore passes so easily from myth uh, to reality than Johnny Appleseed almost half of the country doesn't think Johnny Appleseed actually existed as a real uh, flesh and blood human being uh, but we know differently here of course uh, in Lemister and the surrounding communities because we claim him as our native son. Johnny Appleseed um, was born in Lemister, lived here in Lemister till he was about age six, uh, and his mother died while he was two. Um, during my research, I discovered that after his mother died, in all likelihood, he went to live with his maternal grandparents who uh, literally live on West Street, or lived on West Street in Lemister, someplace I pass by every day. I didn't know that until I researched the book. Um, but what, what is special about John Chapman or Johnny Appleseed is that he lived in such a conservative way. He had such a minimal impact on the world around him. He only used what was necessary to survive. And that's something that we, we, we sometimes look at today as we face climate uh, change and climate crisis. We, we think about our impact on the planet, on the world. Well, long before that was a problem, John Chapman was already doing it. Um, he planted apple seeds, uh, and interestingly enough, the reason he planted apple seeds as opposed to grafting apple trees, which even in the 19th century was the way to gr grow apple trees. Many of you may not realize that when you plant an apple seed, you have no idea what variety of apple tree is going to grow from that. So most people who propagate apples graft trees. Well, Johnny didn't do that for a variety of reasons. Number one, he couldn't carry the rootstock and all of the necessary equipment around to do it because he was on foot, um, not having a horse or a wagon behind him. In addition to that, he didn't think that 
messing with Mother Nature was part of God's vision. He wanted to adhere to God's plan. And honestly, he believed that cutting the branch of the tree would hurt the plant. And he was a vegetarian, uh, as I indicated, a naturalist. He didn't believe in doing any harm to plants or animals um, that wasn't absolutely necessary. So that's why he planted seeds. And um, back in his day, what you got from an apple um, wasn't as important as it is today. Because in his day, the primary products from apple trees were cider and vinegar. Uh, they didn't eat apples the same way we eat them today. And this was absolutely fundamental um, for the frontier. Planting those apple trees on your homestead was a way of staking your homestead, but also a way of survival. And that would, that's what he was offering. And in addition to that, though he was an entrepreneur and did acquire acreage in different places by lease or by ownership, he was not, um, he was oftentimes helping young families that were in need and couldn't afford his seedlings, he would donate them. So he had a big heart as well. Uh, he was a devout Swedborgian, an interesting religious sect that ultimately sprang from the fact that a Swedish man named Emanuel Swedenborg had a big meal in a London chop house, went to bed and had some vivid dreams about what heaven was like as the angels visited him. Um, this religion actually um, produced a Bible, Swedenborgian Bible that Johnny traveled with. And Johnny um, would separate very wisely the Bible into multiple sections and he would leave them at the homestead of the people he visited and then he'd go back and collect them and recirculate them. He dressed very oddly and had more than enough quirks uh, for any particular person. And one thing I found very interesting in researching this man was that when he walked into a village, he was not um, jeered or looked down on, especially by the young people, the kids. We know today that kids can sometimes be brutally honest, and when they saw him walk into town, um, they didn't give him a hard time, despite the fact that he was dressed more oddly than anybody had ever seen, wearing coffee sacks and uh, p multiple pairs of pants like shingles, as they would wear out, he would just add another pair of pants on top of them. He made a rather odd visage. But they didn't give him a hard time about any of this. And I think it's because they recognized his essential goodness and his wisdom. And he was a great storyteller, and he left the world a better place each place he traveled. Um, as a Swedenborgian, he believed that heaven was a literal place where you would have a job like you had on earth, and you would have a home that you lived in. And that uh, brings me to what I thought was one of the most humorous anecdotes that I ever found about Johnny Appleseed. He found himself in Mansfield, Ohio, the center of town, talking to a group of people assembled. And one fellow thought he would test him and said, Johnny, when you go to heaven, do you have the same job that you have while you're on earth? And John replied, yes, you do. And the man quickly said, well, I'm a grave digger. What am I going to do? And that, of course, elicited a bit of a laugh from the people assembled. And then there was another man there that said, well, I'm a lawyer, what am I gonna do? And he said, oh, you people don't go to heaven, you go to hell, where you swing mud at each other for the rest of eternity. So apparently Johnny had a sense of humor too. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, to study him uh, and to try to bring some definition to him. A biographer in 1954 um, was commenting on where Johnny's buried. Uh, we know where he was born, we're just a short distance from here on the Johnson Farm rented land. But honestly, they really don't even know where he's buried because he died in a cabin in March of 1845 that belonged to the Worth family. The problem with it is the Worth family had a cabin on each side of the river. So they don't know which Worth cabin he died in. But his biographer in 1954, Raymond Price, said, that's just as fitting as anything else about Johnny Appleseed because Johnny Appleseed can't really be contained or defined or pin, pigeonholed to one particular place or thing. Um, he's a spirit, as Roy indicated. I think we should be proud that he's part of our spirit, uh, that he went out to make the world a better place, and 250 years later, we're still celebrating. Um, thank you, Roy, for having me.
Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak, and I hope everybody enjoys this 250th celebration day uh, by just reflecting uh, on our own lives and what we can do to make the world a little bit better. Thank you, Mark. So uh, we're almost at the end of our uh, speaking program. I did want to, I think it's appropriate that we invite Johnny up. Do you mind coming up, Johnny? So and he's going to uh, say a few remarks. And then we're lucky enough to have the, uh, we're very thankful to have with us today uh, the Lemonster uh, Marching Band. Uh, and thank you to uh, Bobby Bergeron, who's the band director, and to Arthur Pierce, who's the chorus director, and for the students, uh, the band members that are here today. And I think we're going to have Johnny say a few remarks, and then we'll have the band do their thing. I think they're going to do a happy birthday uh, serenade to Johnny. So I think it's appropriate to come up. So. Good day, good day, one and all. Uh, I first want to say to Mark Medanza, uh, thank you. I, I never knew so much about me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I just want to fill in a few a few gaps if that if that if I have time. Uh, I was born in in Lemonster, and I spent my first six years here, as as, as Mark said. But then I went to <coughs> my daddy. He uh, came out of the revolution as a real right, and he uh, married Miss Lucy Cooley. After, as Mark said, my mother, she died and, when I was about two. And so my daddy, he remarried, and I went down to Longmeadow uh, to be with him. And then pretty soon he, he and Miss Lucy just, well, they just began having children. And they had children, child after child after child. And, before I knew it, it was, I had the 11 brothers and sisters. And so from, from Longmeadow, I, <clears throat> I reached maturity and then <clears throat> I, went out to, I went out to Ohio, I went to Pennsylvania, and uh, there I made my living, uh, growing, planting apple seeds, and selling, selling the, the shoots, uh, much like this one. Um, when from, from the bottom land, that I uh, that I encountered there, and uh, of late, I in my later days I've been uh, spending most of my time around Fort Wayne, but I still go around and round and round to Ohio to tend the the orchards that I started. Um, and so I just wanted to to fill that in. If 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 there's uh, any 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 questions, do you have any questions of John? I don't know the What's answer, I'll just make it up. What's your favorite apple? What's that? What's your favorite apple? Oh, Mark Medanza. I had a lot of, a lot of time to think about this. A whole year. <laughs> Anything else? Well, all right then. then I, I appreciate this. I'm so glad to have a birthday. I never knew such, such, such a, a claim. Uh, when I was running around in Mansfield in the oh, sorry twin when I was running around to, to Mansfield and, and there and that environs so um, I appreciate this that I should live another 250 years so I can have another party like this thank you, thank you Johnny don't go anywhere so I'm gonna turn it over to the band now
Wow. That is great. Thank you so much. So fantastic. Lemonster High School marching band. They're participating in the uh, Rose Parade in 2025. We're very proud of you. Thank you. So we're going to close up the, uh, the ceremony now. A few thank yous uh, before we close. Uh, first of all, again, I want to thank the uh, Lemonster High School marching band. You guys did great. I want to thank Bobby and, and Arthur for their help um, bringing them here today. I want to thank our partners uh, at Mass, uh, Mass Highway. Thank you for everything you do. Great partners. I want to thank um, our other speakers today, of course, uh, Mark Ladanza uh, and our, our state delegation who does a great job really advocating for this center and for our region. Uh, I want to uh, thank, uh, they're not here, but I do want to acknowledge and thank the mayors, uh, the mayor of Lemonster, of course, who couldn't be with us here today, but I also want to acknowledge the other cities here in North Central Massachusetts, Fitchburg and Gardner and the town of Westminster for their support. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a partnership. We, we receive no state funds to operate the visitor center, uh, and this is a partnership with uh, the business community, and we do receive some funds from those communities to help support uh, the day-to-day -day operations of the visitor center so we can continue tell the story here of, uh, of Johnny and of uh, North Central Massachusetts and help promote our region. So I want to acknowledge them and would we'll be remiss if I didn't. I want to uh, thank our friends at Sholin Farms, uh, great par partners and supporters of our mission. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Sholin Farms, only community uh, farm uh, that we're aware of, I don't think there's any other uh, community owned farms, all run by volunteers uh, right here in Lemonster, um, Apple Orchard, and they sell a lot of apples and other fruits and uh, with us today is Joanne Donardo. I want to thank her. She's always been very good and Sholin Farms is very good. They actually care for the trees, the 91 apple trees that we have here, the, the volunteers from Sholin Farms. I want to acknowledge them and thank them for the donation of the apple tree that we're going to plant today in uh, honor of Johnny Appleseed's 250th. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, a member of ours, uh, Plainview Farms, uh, who's here, Keith from Plainview Farms. He's in the back. So thank you, Keith. He brought the alpaca and the llama, which is always like incredibly popular. We had a whole busload of people, tourists that stopped here earlier, and um, and timing-wise, he had just shown up, and they, it was it was a big hit. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Plainview Farm uh, for their support. Uh, I want to thank the chamber staff for helping to organize uh, today's um, today's celebration. Thank you all all for uh, for your support. Uh, I want to thank um, Johnny. Thank you very much for coming today. Uh, I want to thank Lauren uh, Howe, who is uh, with Empowered PR. She's our PR consultant who helped uh, with organizing today and, and helping with the uh, follow-up with the, uh, the media. Uh, and then I uh, want to just acknowledge and thank all of our partners. Um, I think there's, um, oh, Diane reminded me a couple of things. So we have this coin uh, inside at the gift shop. This is a, a coin that was uh, produced by the City of Lemonster, the uh, 250th Planning Committee. Uh, this is on sale. This is a hot ticket item. Uh, we, they've been going like hotcakes, uh, and it's a, a 250th uh, celebration coin uh, that has been produced uh, in honor of uh, Johnny Appleseed's 250th. That's available in the Visitor Center along with some other items. You can get Mark's books at the Visitor Center as well. He may even autograph them for you today if, uh, if you want to purchase one of the books, uh, and that's available at the Visitor Center. And then finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, Diane Burnett, and Sab Sabra uh, Reyes, who's here, Sabra here too. Diane's right here, give a wave. Sabra, thank you Sabra. So, Diane and, and Sabra are the uh, just incredible. Uh, they are our, uh, our, our staff here at the Visitor Center. Uh, they're the ones that are welcoming visitors from near and far uh, here to the Visitor seller, Center, telling them about, answering their questions, telling them about uh, North Central Massachusetts, uh, and they do a great job. So I want to acknowledge and thank them not just for today's celebration, but for the work, all the work they do year-round. This Visitor Center is an incredible testament to our communities here in the region uh, and the partnerships that we have, and none of that would be possible without a great team here. Um, the Visitor Center is open year-round. They're only uh, closed a couple of holidays. Uh, they're even when, when we have inclement weather, they're usually open, and so we really appreciate Diane Sabre and the entire team including some of the volunteers that work here at the Visitor Center. So I want to acknowledge and thank them. Can we have a big round of applause for them? And then uh, I think that's it for our speaking program. I invite you to stay for a while. We have some refreshments. Uh, we have all kinds of, oh, Diane's reminding me, the, the colonial area home that was donated uh, recently and it's added to our collection of 
of items here at the visitor center. Uh, she has opened it, and there's some additional artifacts, uh, historic memorabilia that's inside the visitor center. We just recently had an apple press that was donated by by a member of the of a community, historic apple press that's in there. So if the door is open, you can go in if you peek in if you want. Uh, and then again, I invite you to, to enjoy some of the refreshments that we have here. Uh, we are planning, the plan was to plant this tree, but I think with the weather, we're gonna hold off on that. But I would like our speakers, and I would like uh, Diane from Sho um, Joanne from uh, Sholin Farms to join us up front for a quick photo. Everyone else, please enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy some of the refreshments, and thank you again. Oh, one other thank you. I'm sorry, Lemonster Access Television. Thank you so much for the great work you guys do. Thank you so much for videotaping this today. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the day.